In the last class, we have learned an algorithm to generate an N of A with epsilon transitions from a right linear grammar. And today, we are going to learn two more algorithms. The first one to generate a right linear grammar from an N of A with epsilon transitions. And after that, we will also learn an algorithm to generate an epsilon transition N of A from a left linear grammar. And to start with, we can discuss a lemma which says that an N of A, capital Q, capital S, capital delta, capital F, with a multiple star state can be converted into an equivalent N of A with epsilon transitions, capital Q prime, small s, capital delta prime, and capital F. So the set of final states is same, and we are going to uh, have new set of states, new start state, and a new set of transitions. And equivalent in the sense that accepting the same language. Consider an example. So given an N of A, epsilon transitions are not used in this example. So there are two start states. And here the lemma says that now this can be transformed into an N of A with a single start state. And here is an N of A. And in this, what I did is, I just added a new state and made it as the unique initial state in the required N of A. So what I did is, I added a state and I added epsilon transitions to the initial state of the given N of A. So in this, without consuming an input by taking the epsilon transition, I can either reach into P or R. Both are start state in the given N of A. So it's very easy to see that the language is same because here I start and without reading the first simple, I can reach either into P or R, which is like having P and R as start states. So formally, how can I define Q prime? Q prime is the set of all state in the given N of A and one additional state, which is the new start state. Okay, and this is the new start state. And uh, what is the set of transition function? which is all the transitions in the given N of A, that is capital Delta, union, these two transitions. That is, yes on Epsilon going to P and S on Epsilon going to R, where P and R are the start states in the original N of A. That is for all start state P in the original N of A, you add a transition from the new start state to P with epsilon as the label. So this tells us that any N of A with a one or more start states can be transformed into an equivalent N of A with a single start state. And the proof can be uh, done using the principle of mathematical induction. So you need to prove both the soundness and completeness. And if you are interested in, please refer to the lecture where we learned about the use of mathematical induction proving similar theorem and try to use that technique to prove the correctness of this construction as well. And with this, let me move on to the uh, first algorithm that we are going to learn in this lecture, which is for subclaim 2, which tells that any regular language can be represented by a regular grammar. So basically, we need to construct a regular grammar from an N of A with epsilon transition. And so an N of A with epsilon transition A can be converted into a grammar G sub A such that their languages are same. So basically we need an algorithm to convert an N of A with a single star state to a right linear grammar. So we know that any N of A can be transformed into an N of A with, epsilon, uh, with a single start state. Hence, without loss of generality, we can assume that the given N of A is having a unique start state. Now we are going to learn an algorithm to generate a right linear grammar from an N of A with a single start state. 
Here is an NFA with a single start state and consider an accepting path in this NFA. Here is a path. AB is going to a final state. That means the string AB is in the language of the NFA. And our aim is to generate a right linear grammar such that the language represented by the grammar is exactly the language of this NFA. So basically to accept this string we need this kind of a derivation in the grammar. From the start simple capital A, we are first going to derive small a followed by capital B, then this B is going to be replaced with small b followed by C generating this sentential form and finally this C will be replaced with an epsilon and we are going to generate AB and that will be the corresponding derivation. And now the question is how can we generate the grammar G sub A? And if you observe what we did is we took the first transition which is going from the state A to state B and what we did is we said okay in the corresponding derivation uh, the variable capital A is going to be replaced with small a capital B. So for this kind of a transition what we did is we added two variables corresponding to these states capital A and capital B and we added this rule. So rule is this that is for an edge of the form A going to B on the simp input simple small a you say that A goes to B on the simple small a. Yes, so that's what you do. And the next thing we did is uh, we did this derivation and what is it corresponding to this transition that is there is a transition going from the state B to the state C on the input simple B. So we need a rule to replace B with a BC and that is what we need for having this kind of a derivation. So basically it is simple to have uh, to replace the transition going from B to C on B you have this rule B going to small bc in the grammar and finally what you have is this as a final state that means right now you have derived this sentential form and because you reach here so whatever you process which is ab ab must be in the language that means the c must be replaced with an epsilon that is for every final state c you need to have a rule c going to epsilon and that is what you have in you need to have in the grammar and basically with this simple observation we can try to construct the algorithm. So here is an NFA with epsilon transition and we can try to generate the grammar. So given this NFA with epsilon transition and a unique start state we are going to write an algorithm to generate the right linear grammar. The first step is identify all the states, these are the states and then you say that the states are going to be the variables of the grammar, the set of variables or non-terminals are exactly the set of states in the NFA, that is the first step. So to formally write it we are saying that the set of non-terminals in the grammar is nothing but the set of states in the given NFA very simple to see. And next step is you identify the start state, this is the start state and then you say that okay this variable is going to be the start simple of the grammar. So the start simple is nothing but the start state, the variable corresponding to the start state. So that is step number two, you are saying the start state of the grammar is nothing but the variable represented by the start state of the NFA. So here in this example it is capital A and that is why I said capital A and generally it is this start state and that is what I said small s. Hope it is clear and the next is we need to consider this transition. So from the previous discussion we know that for a transition going from the state A to the state B we need this rule that is variable A can be replaced with small a capital B a goes to small a b. Okay, that's what we did and just formalize and write the next step. For all transition 
going from A to B on small a. This triple represents that there is a transition from A to B on A. That is this triple. So, for all transition of this kind at this root, A going to small a b. That means capital A can be replaced with small a b. So, that is it. And the next transition is this and the same rule applies. So, we are adding b going to small a capital B. And the next transition is for B, which tells B is capital B goes to small b capital B. We are adding it using the same step in the algorithm. And the next transition in this example, N of A is transition going from the state B to state C on B. So the rule to be added is using this step is B going to small b capital C. And uh, I think we finished all the uh, example transitions using this step and now the next kind of transition is an epsilon transition which means from the state A you can uh, go to the state C without reading an input symbol. So basically you need a transition of this kind. A can be just replaced with capital C because no input symbol is there. And now we can generalize and add the corresponding rule in the algorithm which says that for our epsilon transition from A to B on epsilon, you add A to B rule in the grammar and that is what we did. And now that is the last step and so we have got just a set of four steps to derive or to generate a right linear grammar from an NFA with epsilon transition. And uh, and sorry, there is one more step because uh, we have this final state. Sorry that I missed it. This this final uh, state to account that this is a final state. We know, uh, we have seen that we need to add this transition. So one more step, and the step is that for all final states a in the given n of a, you need to add a goes to epsilon in the set of rules. And here the state was c. That is why I said c goes to epsilon and in general for all final states a add a goes to epsilon and that is it. And we can have a correctness lemma which tells that the language generated by the right linear grammar is precisely the language of the n of a and in this case it is correct you can observe that it is starting with a and ending with b or epsilon that is the language. And you can use principle of mathematical induction to prove the soundness and completeness. And if you are having time, please try to do the correctness proof. And with this, we got an algorithm to generate a right linear grammar from an NFA with epsilon transition. And now it reminds us to discuss an algorithm to generate a an NFA from a left linear grammar and for that we need to do some preparation. First define what the reverse of a string is. Example say for a string x the reverse is denoted by x reverse x r means x reverse and reverse of empty string is empty string itself and reverse of uh, letter a is a itself and reverse of a string a b is b followed by a. And so you can define the reverse of a string as recursively as reverse of a string epsilon is epsilon, reverse of the string a where a is uh, simple is a and reverse of a string x concatenated with a is recursively defined as a followed by reverse of x. So a is coming as the first simple followed by reverse of the string x and that is it. For example, if you want to find the reverse of ABC, in order to apply this rule, you have to rewrite it as AB concatenated with the C reverse. And then this rule applies and which tells you that it is C followed by AB reverse. Now to apply the third rule, you need to rewrite AB as A dot B. And now the third rule applies and which tells you that this part is B followed by A reverse and that is it. And now the second rule applies directly and which tells that A reverse is A. So C followed by B followed by A and it is C B A. It is simple but uh, you need to know how you can mathematically define it. So that is a reverse of a string. Now we can try to define the reverse of a language. 
So given a language like this, the reverse is the set of all string reverses. So the first one is the reverse of this, this is the reverse of this, and this is the reverse of this. Another language, L2. These are the four strings, and the reverse of L2 is Asian is reverse is Nisa, and the reverse of Halala is Alala, and the reverse of Kerala is Alarak, and the reverse of Rat is Tar. So the reverse of a language is set of all string reverses. So formally, reverse of a language L can be defined as set of all X reverse said that X is in the language. So these are just definitions. And now we can see what will happen when we apply reverse twice. For example, in the word Asian, if you apply a reverse, you will get NISA. If you apply reverse on NISA, you will get back the original string. So that means reverse of reverse of a string is exactly that string. And you can prove it using principle of mathematical induction. And it, it is the same for the language as well. This is a language, if you apply reverse twice, then you will get the same language. So which tells for all languages, if you apply reverse twice, you will get the same language. And this is a lemma that you need in the literal algorithm. And now we can see what will happen when we reverse the RHS of productions in a left linear grammar. So this is a left linear grammar and the language is this. You can uh, see that uh, these are the set of things derived and the language is set of all AB raised to I where I is greater than 0. So one or more occurrences of AB. And now see this grammar and how I obtained this grammar is by reversing the RHS of these productions. So this is obtained by reversing this RHS, BAB, that is what I got here. And the second production is obtained by reversing the RHS of this production, which is BA. So we can see that when we reverse the RHS of a right linear grammar, we are getting, sorry, RHS of a left linear grammar, we are getting a right linear grammar. Okay, and the language, these are the strings derived and you can see that what you are getting is BA raised to I, which is the reverse of this language. So in general, which is true, if you reverse the RHS of productions in a left linear grammar, you are getting a right linear grammar and the right linear grammar will generate the reverse of the language generated by the left linear grammar. This is a simple example, but we can generalize it as a procedure. Given a left linear grammar G NTSP, one can construct a right linear grammar G prime NTSP prime. That is same set of variable, same set of terminal symbols and the same start symbol, but the productions are different. And how the productions are defined is, if you have a production, left linear production A going to BX, you add a production A going to X reverse B, which is exactly the reverse of the RHS. That means if you have this production B followed by ABCD, which is a left linear production, you add a production DCBA, which is a reverse of this followed by capital B, which is a right linear production. Another kind of production is this. If you have a production A going to X, you add A going to X reverse. Here is an example. And uh, so basically you can observe that you can obtain a right linear grammar from a left linear grammar generating the language which is the reverse of the original language. Hope you followed it, otherwise please watch it again and with this now we can uh, move to a new technique to reverse the edges in an NFA. Given an NFA like this, the language is either epsilon or set of all strings starting with A and ending in B. And uh, my aim is to just reverse the edges in this NFA and obtain a new NFA. So what I did is I just reversed the directions of all the edges in it. Now this was A going to B, this is B going to A. So all the 1, 2, 3, 4 edges are reversed. And now one more step, first is reverse the edges, second is change final state to initial state and initial state to final state, that's what I did. 
Now if you observe, you can see that the language is either epsilon or all strings starting with B and ending in A and that is what it is. So this is a nice technique which will allow you to generate an NFA accepting the reverse of a language given by an NFA and you can write it as a procedure given an NFA with epsilon transition A one can construct an NFA with epsilon transition A reverse such that A reverse generates the language which is the reverse of the language generated by A and how you define it is you reverse all the edges that is if there is an edge going from P to Q in delta you add an edge going from Q to P with the same level that is what we did and another change is you made all the final states as star state in the new NFA and you made all the star states in the given NFA as final states in the required NFA and uh, you can prove the correctness of this procedure using the principle of mathematical induction because of the interest of time I am not doing the proof if you want you can try proving the correctness and with this we are moving to the last part of the lecture where we are going to learn an algorithm to generate an NFA with epsilon transition from a left linear grammar. So given a left linear grammar what you do the first step is obtain a right linear grammar such that the language of the right linear grammar is the reverse of the language of the left linear grammar. In this lecture we have learned an algorithm by reversing the RHS of a right left linear grammar you know that you will get a right linear grammar generating the language which is the reverse of the original language so that is what we are doing as the first step. Second step is from the obtained right linear grammar use the algorithm to generate an NFA with a epsilon transition. This algorithm is what we learned in the last class and we know that then this NFA with epsilon transition will generate the same language as the right linear ROM. And the last step is from the NFA obtain from the NFA A sub G prime obtain an NFA with epsilon transition the reverse of that NFA that is the last technique. From this NFA you reverse the edges and change initial and final states. Interchange the initial and final states you are obtaining a new NFA AG prime reverse said that whose language is the reverse of the language of AG prime. Okay, hope you followed it otherwise please watch it again and if you do you, uh, you can see that the language of AG prime reverse that is this language is defined as this what is it? L of AG prime they all reverse. Okay, now what is L of AG prime? From this step we know that it is L of G. So this has to be L of G. That's what I am writing here. L of G prime. That is this. And what is L of G prime? From the first step we know that it is L of G, the whole reverse. So the L of G prime, this part is L of G, the whole reverse. That is what I. Do. And we know that if we apply reverse twice on L of G, then we will get L of G itself. So in effect what we did is we uh, we generated an NFA with a epsilon transition AG prime reverse generating the same language as that of the given left linear grammar and hence we obtained an NFA with epsilon transitions accepting the same language of the left linear grammar and thus we proved that for every left linear grammar there exists an NFA with epsilon transition and with this we established that the class of languages accepted by the family of regular grammars is precisely the set of regular languages. And that is the last part and I am giving you two assignment questions. And first one is use the algorithm discussed in the class to generate a right linear grammar GA from the following ground. Uh, NFA A. This is the NFA, apply the procedure and obtain GA. And the second question is from this GA, apply the algorithm to generate or write, sorry, an NFA with epsilon transition. So, first you obtain a right linear grammar from this NFA, that is the first question, 
and the result which is a right linear gamma use as an input and you apply the algorithm to generate an NFA with epsilon transitions and with this we are finishing this lecture and so now with the lectures last one and this lecture we established that the class of languages generated by the family of regular numbers is precisely the set of regular languages. Thank you.